<clears throat> I'm Dr. Lindsay Doe, clinical sexologist, and this is David Herrera, director of the Montana Two-Spirit Society. So David, I am wondering if you could tell our audience what Two-Spirit means. Probably one of the most asked questions that we get. <laughs> what, <laughs> what's like, what Two-Spirit? Two For me, it's a cultural term more than anything else, as it relates to Native and Indigenous um, tribes and people. The term Two-Spirit came out in 1990. Uh, I believe it was about 1988 or 89. Okay. Back then, you know, during the 80s and stuff, HIV was already hitting, so it was already mobilizing a lot of LGB communities uh, around that. So there was talk about wanting to bring together and start like this native national organization. For the most part, a lot of the native folks did not identify with the gay LGB, you know, T community at all. They were more identified with their tribe. You know, it's like, well, it's like, I'm not a gay, you know, man, I'm, you know, Cherokee, or I am, you know, Blackfeet. It was a very foreign concept to create an identity based on your sexual expression. Because every tribe had their own word for what it meant to be kind of like two-spirit or, you know, gay or lesbian and stuff. And so we knew, like, okay, you know, we can't use, you know, Nadle, you know, the national Nadle, because that was really only referred to Navajo or, you know, Winkta, which would be more of the, you know, the Sioux, Lakota. And so I was like trying to come up with a word that would be an umbrella that everybody would know that this is what we're talking about. So the one of the first gatherings that happened was in, in Minneapolis back in the late 80s. And it was at that gathering that the folks came up with the term two-spirit. Would that work? Was that something that we could all agree on, that we could identify with and use? that put that out there, that, that when we say two-spirit, we are talking about native indigenous, you know, individuals who, you know, are identify or maybe, you know, gay, lesbian, what we would, you know, know as gay, lesbian, um, or trans. At this year's gathering, we had a panel of, of two-spirit folks from, from Hawaii, from Philippines, from Mexico, from Canada, and wow. to hear, <laughs> to hear the, the colonization and what happened and how those, you know, cultures and how the two-spirit folks in those cultures were reverted. The same thing like in, in Hawaii, the exact same thing in Hawaii, the mahu, which would be, you know, the term, you know, that, that they use there. They were, you know, the ceremonial leaders. They were the name givers the same way that the two-spirit folks in other tribes, you know, had the same responsibilities. So get back to the question. That's a long way <laughs> to okay. go, but I guess the, the the two-spirit term basically was an embodiment of both the masculine and the feminine. And recognizing that in some tribes, you know, they, they recognize more than just two different types of, you know, I mean, they might say that there are maybe three or four or five different types of, of identities, you know, that could be, you know, female, female, male, female, male, male, whatever. But for the most part, two-spirit is just, um, you know, it's just en encapsulating both that that feminine and masculine. But, you know, like I said, there are still a lot of native indigenous folks that don't identify as two-spirit. They'd rather identify as gay or lesbian, you know, because they see the two-spirit is maybe not reflective of, you know, their life experience per se. Or they may see that no two-spirit carries a um, a type of responsibility. So if you're actually working, you know, you're helping your tribe doing that stuff and, and doing kind of ceremony, then then they would maybe identify as two-spirit. But if they're not willing to, to do that, then they don't want to take that term on for themselves. But I think for the most part, our work that we do is really trying to not only educate about what the term two-spirit means, but more importantly, to educate about the history and how two-spirit people were a part of of all of these, you know, indigenous and native histories that for the most part was wiped out as a result of colonization. And we were kind of taken out of the sacred circle. And so our work is about bringing us back into that sacred circle because without us, then that circle is not complete. We're talking about the North American continent and the indigenous people or First Nations people there identifying as two-spirit, but then also the larger tribe believing that these individuals are integral to the whole community as medicine people, as warriors, as... Yeah, I mean, they were the, the name givers, they were the negotiators, they were, you know, the ceremonial leader. I mean, and, and it varied, you know, again, in, from tribe to tribe, depending on the type of roles and responsibilities that they, that they had. In fact, in some of the tribes, if they found that they knew from a very young age that this person was going to end up being two-spirit, 
they were groomed to, to be leaders within their community and even in some tribes even to be chiefs because they were, they were said to be that, that powerful, you know, and, and have that type of power. And it, it all changed when the, <laughs> the missionaries, you know, came and, and you know, the, everybody got put on reservations and there's stories in uh, when the Spanish came and conquered what we know now is Mexico, they saw that there were these individuals, you know, men kind of dressed as women, and they said, nope, can't have that. I mean, they would, so they would like round them up and actually just um, have these dogs, you know, attack them and kill them, you know. So once the tribes learned that this is what the Spanish were doing, they would send runners to the next, you know, um, tribe telling them, you know, hide these individuals because they're killing them, you know, that they're targeting them out, they're singling and they're killing them, so hide them so that you don't lose them. And so they started doing that in order to, to try and protect these, you know, two-spirit people that were very important to those cultures. But that's why, I mean, it's so great to see this, so many of these tribes that have still remained resilient um, are now, you know, preserving their language, preserving their culture. And when you talk to elders and stuff and they know and they remember that, oh yeah, we did have, you know, these two-spirit individuals that, you know, they were just part of the tribe. They were just part of, you know, life. We recognize that two-spirit, the term, is a an, an, an artificial sort of term that was created mm -hmm. that, you know, out of the Eng English language as opposed to any sort of indigenous, you know, tribal, you know, language. But there's like hundreds and hundreds of different tribes. So Again, it was we had to try and come up with a English term that everybody could sort of understand and relate to and know that this is what we were talking about. We've been asked, well, then can anybody use that term? You know, why can't me as a as a you know um, can non native? I as yeah. Um, and so our response is no. <laughs> uh, it's like for the simple fact that so much of the native indigenous culture has been already appropriated and misappropriated. So we always, because we get asked, in fact, we were receiving emails from LGBT folks in Europe and saying, hey, I read about you, blah, blah, and this really resonates with me, and blah, I really want to, can we use our the term two-spirit for our group and stuff? And so our response is like to say, no, <laughs> we really don't want you to be using that term because that term is really unique. It's a cultural term unique to native indigenous you know, peoples. Instead, it's like we would encourage folks to go back into their own history and look at, you know, what was, what were the terms, what was your history, how were the, the you know, LGBT individuals, because I guarantee you they were there <laughs> since day one, and, you know, go back into, into your culture and learn more about that, and then try and come up with, with something that resonates and is more reflective of that culture, um, as opposed to you know appropriating something that's meant to be very culturally unique to the native and indigenous peoples, not only here in, in this country, but you know above and beyond you know these these borders that we live in. So I think it's just a it's 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 part of that education to to, to you know what exactly does this term two spirit mean you know do we have transgendered folks that come and, and are and are identified as absolutely but that doesn't mean that every transgendered person would be able to identify as two spirit because it for us it really is about a cultural term that relates more to you know your tribe your history your native indigenous you know people that, that you um, identify with. At least that's how, and how, how we view it. And I'd say for the most part, I think, I mean, there's like now in this country, I think we have anywhere from 17 to 19 Two-Spirit Societies and more and more that are being created, which is, which is amazing. This is, this is part of our vision. This is part of the work and why we're doing this is to really help inspire and these different tribes and stuff to go back and learn about their own history and say, oh, we had two-spirit people here too. And it's like, let's, how do we then, you know, bring awareness and, and because there's nothing being done for, for our two-spirit community in North Carolina or South, you know, Carolina and stuff when we know that there's tribes and have been tribes there for, for hundreds of years. Because this was the closest that I ever, anything resonated with my culture and growing up down on, in the, on the border of, of 
Texas and in Mexico when I met, you know, friends from the Blackfeet tribe and from all these different tribes and we all had the exact same experience when it came to the importance of, you know, of ceremony and the importance of food and, and everything else and, and the laughter that we all did, <laughs> the healing through laughter, which was so important. So yeah, it just then even just clicked right there. It's like, this is my, this is my tribe. This is my people. This is where I belong. And, you know, this is where I can use my skills to help. So I've been doing that for 30 plus years. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so amazing. Thank you for your greater good. Thank you for your individual good. It's so touching to hear your stories and so powerful to know like, everything that you're doing to help the people young and old go through their lives with more of a sense of self and belonging. So thank you. Stay, Stay curious. curious.